as I was stopping doing music, I was thinking, what else can I do with my life? All I like to do is martial arts and yoga. And I, I'm not really qualified to do anything else. I don't really have any qualification. And then one day in my, and I did yoga every day or six days a week for two hours a day. And then one day, one of the yoga teachers said, Hey, I'm, I'm leaving town. Can you substitute teach all my classes? I said, well, I'm not really a yoga teacher. She goes, Oh, you know, all this stuff, you know, you've lived in an ashram, you know, so much more than me, just, you know, just sub my classes for me. And I said, okay, I could figure it out. I said, but if I go, if I teach a yoga class, I'm going to play the harmonium because I chant before I, well, I'll, I'll teach. And she said, well, I don't know if that's going to work really good in Los Angeles because I was in Los Angeles. And I said, well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I only chant. That's the only way I'll, I'll do it. And she said, okay, you can do it. So I taught at these very big popular places in Los Angeles and every place I subbed for her, I got hired. <laughs> I got hired and oh. literally overnight or within two days, I had a full-time yoga schedule teaching yoga. <laughs> um, and so that's sort of how I started teaching yoga. And then I started working about, because I, I'm a natural you know, preacher, I'll call it a preacher because I like to explain the Bhagavad Gita and I really try to think deeply about the Bhagavad Gita. And so for me, it's really easily, easy to put the Bhagavad Gita and Asana class together. And oftentimes people want to hear some type of words of wisdom. In America, they call it a Dharma talk where you talk about right, rightful living. People like chanting. They like call and response chanting. And so I've, I've just arranged a class that what, because I was very strong in my physical practice, I would draw them in with strong physical asanas. I can mm. do handstands. I can take handstand to a bakasana. I can do handstand and come all the way to sitting. I can go from sitting back to handstand. You know, so my physical practice was really strong. And that's attractive to people who want some power. But what they get was bhakti because I'm into bhakti. So the more I got into teaching yoga, it started putting me back on my, um, on my spiritual path, which I sort of stepped a little bit away from. Now, in retrospect, you can see that everything, Krishna, everything you go through in your life, it's Krishna's way of moving things for your benefit. He uses your karma. He uses your choices. He uses your free will. He uses your intensity in devotion. He uses your fall down in devotion for your benefit. And it's quite beautiful. Like, for example, if I didn't go through that whole period, I would have never met Joe Rogan. Me being on the Joe Rogan podcast has so many people listening to the Srimad Bhagavatam every day. Every day they say, yeah, I just heard you on Joe Rogan. I really like the way you explained it. I'm sort of into spirituality. Now I listen to the Bhagavatam with your podcast, Wisdom of the Sages. That's our podcast, Wisdom of the Sages. They listen to it every day. And so I realized that even me pulling away from Krishna, Krishna would use that for your benefit and for the benefit of other people. And that is the beauty of bhakti. It's above our karma. It's above our good karma, our bad karma, our malefic planets, our, um, our, our good, our strong house, you know, in astrology. It's above astrology. There is no bad day. There is no bad karma. There is no malefic planet. There is no gem that's going to fix your malefic planet. There only is Krishna who's given you exactly what you need. And it's going to be different than your plan because you might have some other agenda that is not Krishna's agenda. Krishna has an agenda exactly for you. And it may not be exactly what you're planning. But it's perfect Amazing. because Krishna is perfect and your life is perfect. And if you don't accept Krishna's plan, you're just in the throes of your karma. I'm having a good day. I'm having a bad day. I'm going to a, a problem period in my life or a problem. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in a, my planet is in a bad house or a, there's no yoga in this chart or something like that. You're, you're at the hands of your ups and downs. Our bhakti is transcendental to the ups and downs of our karma. Krishna is Yogeshwar. He's above these laws of karma. Hope that wasn't too long-winded. No, that's beautiful. So actually, we always talk about how we can bring a negative to positive. 
and how we can talk about uh, what do you say transforming our pains or learning from our pains but this point of how sometimes our going away from krishna can not only draw us back to krishna but can also give us some experiences that can further draw it can help us draw others to krishna that's remarkable mm-hmm. in one it's sense remarkable yeah in one sense if you consider in our tradition also uh, i've been studying a little bit of our tradition and contemporary traditions history also that it seems many of the most significant uh, uh, developments happened at the fringe not in the center now bhakti not thakur was not in the central power structure of the gaudiya vaishnavism mm. and even in this the iskon chopati temple which has all the council system and so many other things that was not exactly the mains uh, that was not in the mainstream of iskon at that time not the bhakti tirth sure. maharaj projects so in one sense sure. you are exploring yoga and martial arts so i was thinking how prabhupad when he came to india india had many temples but prabhupad out even indians by having at that time a full marble temple in juhu so in one sense what prabhupad did culturally with temples you did physically through your yoga that people who are interested <laughs> in power you could excel in their definition of success sure that is amazing so were you always physically very strong and resilient or no i was never really athletic oh. yoga yoga saved me yoga gave me strength it gave me flexibility it taught me how to breathe it taught i i corrected my diet um yeah i was i, I was never never amazing and um, overall so when you said that you start you said it to do singing before the yoga so was that also common or that was also not very common at that time mixing kirtan work kirtan was also in, big in at Amer- that time in 80s in the 90s in america it was it, it's a mix it was mixed truthfully some people hate it and they try to make yoga secular okay and um some people think it's cool and my feeling was i'm just going to do whatever i want to do cuz i think it's cool and okay. sometimes when you just do what you believe is cool there'll be people who'll be like yeah that is cool i want to be like you that's how we started our band youth of today we didn't care if people didn't like us we just wanted to do what we did and we were good at what we did and people listened to us so i could do the physical poses i could do them i could com- so it wasn't a competition but in that sense i could do whatever they could do i can do even stronger things than they can do but i'm also into bhakti and guess what if you sign up for a yoga class this is yoga you signed up for it it's not like i'm a, on the street i say hey you want to buy a bhagavad gita guys like i didn't sign up for this i didn't i'm not asking to buy a bhagavad gita you're approaching me but you came to a yoga class this is the culture of yoga and i'm here to give you the culture of yoga If you don't like it, don't come to a yoga class or come to a class where the guy doesn't know anything about yoga and he'll just teach you how to do uh, gymnastics. I'm not a gymnastic teacher, I'm not a coach, I'm not a, a personal trainer. I teach yoga. It's my job to disseminate yoga truth. So, you know, this is one thing which struck me that uh you can be upfront. Earlier you use you use the word what? like wide gated in your spiritual approach so mm. in one sense you can be broad minded at the same time you can be quite upfront about who you are so I, I, we we don't have to conceal I, who we are it's just that we don't why, have to condemn what others it? are we have something so it's like imagine if you have this beautiful painting and when people come over you put a blanket over it why keep krishna in the closet like he's like he's like he's deformed. Krishna is not deformed. He's very beautiful. He's charming. Why not put him at the main seat? Why not treat him like the guest of honor that he is? Krishna and Bhakti is incredibly cool. Oh. He's the coolest thing ever. Our culture is so cool. It's not like we're boring or closed-minded or um uh, racist or rude or cruel. We got something very cool going on. <laughs> 